You're looking at a heroin smuggler, a cocaine buyer, a mobster, an outlaw biker, a guy who's had contracts taken on his life, a guy who has infiltrated the highest echelons of uh, the drug cartels and lived to tell about it. Uh, your life is not a movie script, but it ought to be. Is it going to be? I don't know. Uh, to be honest with you, that never really interested me. Reading about your life and reading the book, uh, th that's what occurs to me. It's too fantastic to be true. Uh, Michael Levine uh, spent 25 years as an undercover agent with the federal government, the last 17 of them with the Drug Enforcement Administration. DEA's put over 3,000 uh, people behind bars. He's uh, been responsible for the confiscation of tons of illegal drugs. And uh, he says we're losing the war, aren't we? Intentionally. Intentionally In yes. losing the war on drugs. Intentionally. Uh, let me quote Lee Atwater, the chairman of the Republican Party, wh when he described the Panama drug war invasion. He called it a political jackpot. Well, what I'm saying and what Deep Cover is saying is that the whole drug war is a political grab bag and that all the politicians have their arms in it up to here and that what they're interested in is being reelected, votes, bureaucracies are interested in the life of the bureaucracy. Uh, People are in it for self-aggrandizement, lucrative careers after their careers as drug warriors. The, the notion of winning a drug war has long been forgotten. You've said that the agencies involved in the drug war are riddled with mismanagement, incompetence, uh, disorganized, uh, they are, they're rivalrous uh, with each other. And agents' lives mean nothing. Uh, Your life if, was on the line many times. Thank well, you brought along uh, an example, a videotape that kind of shows yeah. that. Well, well, set it up for us. Which sure. Well, in the videotape, uh, let, me, let me preface it by saying that most DEA agents face this all the time. Most narcs face this all the time. You felt all during that time your life was expendable? They felt that? Oh, yeah. Uh, the tr what I learned, after, after I, particularly after I was stationed overseas, was that I was in more danger from the people behind me, the people pulling my strings, the politicians and bureaucrats who were sending me out there than I was from the drug dealers. A drug dealer will think two or three times before he kills you. A politician won't hesitate to send you into the most suicidal spot for political reasons. And you were pretty tight with some of these cartel guys, the major drug dealers, weren't you? I mean, you were yes, sir. up in the organizations. Yes. Uh, I can go on for hours about how this drug war has been sold out, but in deep cover, if you don't come to the conclusion after reading it that these people wanted myself dead and the other undercover agent, Jorge Quijo, who lives in Los Angeles, dead and the case destroyed, then I didn't do my job in writing it. Michael's book is called Deep Cover, and uh, it, it tells the inside story, as he says here, of how DEA uh, is losing the biggest battle of the drug war. This particular, what was the name of this particular uh, case? Well, this case, I called it Operation Trifecta because it reached, we actually reached the top of the drug world in Panama, Bolivia, and Mexico. In fact, you have on uh, a film clip of myself bribing. Is that, is that what we're going to show here? Well, the first one, I think, is uh, where well, I was set Don't up. roll it yet, but uh, set it up for Yeah, us. the first film clip uh, was one written about in a book about the John Gotti organization, and uh, the death of Willie Boyd Johnson was attributed to this drug deal. This what is you, a crime syndicate in this country. No? Yeah, in New York. About. And, uh, South America here. I was undercover with this organization doing a drug deal and they had set me up to murder me and get back the money and drugs. Wow. My men picked it up on camera and it was a race. That's you walking? Yeah, that's me walking. With the drugs. And now at this point you watch me. I'm watching him. I know they have guns. Uh, there's another car across the parking lot with guns and I won't take my eyes off him. I'll watch, I'll turn back. Now go. My men move in. Now watch real closely. The other car which is uh, with armed men who were going to move in on me, we had a little girl agent right next to them, and she just stepped right up to them and stuck a gun in their window just wow. as they started to move. You see her? Oh. And now, were they planning to ar ar arrest you and make it look like they were arresting you? Yeah, well, they had to arrest me because our informant in this case was in jail with the man who set up the deal. So we had to rush him out of jail, and I had to pretend I was a prisoner up until the last moment. Uh, you say we're losing the war, and, and you say uh, maybe it's intentional. Maybe uh, oh, just the theory uh, about, about, about drugs are better than communism. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's only one. I, you know, when uh, Von Raab resigned from, uh, from customs, he wrote to President Bush, third world debt schemes are more important than the drug war. Well, the Andean nation has $42 billion international debt. We These wanna, are the coca producers. Let me see if I understand. We want to keep those countries 
in the drug business so they can pay off we have to. our debt. We have to. We don't even have a choice. Uh, you listen to our own State Department people. Uh, they say we cannot win this drug war without giving these people a substitute crop. What's your answer? To the whole drug war? Your answer, yeah. I say that we follow uh, the, uh, what the Chinese and the Japanese did in winning successful drug wars. We give the druggies treatment on demand, only it's the demand of society. We as a society demand you as a druggie get in and rehabilitate yourself, and then you prove to us you're clean. Otherwise, keep them in until he's you clean. You keep them in until they're clean. Um, why we haven't even looked in that direction just knocks me out. In 1949, Red China had nine, uh, 70, 70 million heroin addicts when they took over the mainland China. Within three years, they had none. Uh, Dry up the demand they, because you're they, never going to stop the supply. The, right? whole f the, the, the whole thrust of what they did was going after the drug user, putting them in mental institutions. Now, we don't have to follow it exactly the way they did. Japan didn't follow their exact uh, example. But the object is to attack demand. Use most of your resources to attack demand. It's a social problem. I had a brother who was a heroin addict for 19 years. Who My daughter, himself, he killed right? himself. Uh, my daughter was into drugs, and uh, bad enough where I was given a hardship transfer to try and help her, and we did. I mean, uh, I, uh, I just happened to be uh, a homicidal father who spent half his time looking for my, my daughter's drug connection while I was out working undercover for the government. Um, the object is I have never, ever seen drug dealers give out drugs. The politicians are lying to us because that's what win votes. If you, if you call a drug user a victim, what you do is you remove the onus of immorality on the guy who uses, who chooses to use drugs. Drug users all turn each other on. The Medellin cartel doesn't send the guy in with a suitcase to the states to pick up demand. You can't you have, sell something yeah. you don't have a customer. It's exactly. exactly. I wish I had a lot more time to talk to a fascinating guy who has laid his life on the line for all of us. Uh, and uh, deserves our thanks for that and hopefully we'll open some eyes uh, the DEA has been very silent at this point about uh, the things you say about them they they have whole committees working on me and the book and like I said the book is before the House Select Committee if they have a problem with it come right alongside of me raise your right hand I'll swear to everything in that book let them testify with me I think you'll be hearing more about Michael Levine his book is deep cover and uh, it'll astound you thanks for being with us Mike. thank you very much back on sunup right after this